Hello. Happy New Year. Thank you for joining me uh, tonight for One Who Rides the Tiger Can Never Dismount, Tiger Symbolism in Asian Art. I am Adriana Prozer, and I am the Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Quincy Scott Curator of Asian Art here at the Walters Art Museum. Today, I'm going to be delivering a lecture in recognition of the tiger, which um, represents the third year in the 12 year cycle uh, in the of the lunar calendar. And um, after I finish speaking, we'll have some time for some questions. Um, please note that this program is being recorded and will be available on the museum's YouTube channel and Facebook page. The title of this talk comes from an ancient Chinese proverb that can be used to describe someone who finds themselves irrevocably but unwittingly committed or unable to get themselves out of a difficult situation and so must move ahead. Qi Hu Nan Xia, literally, ride tiger, difficult to dismount. Or as I've translated it here, don't dismount when riding a tiger somehow seemed an apt title as we try to buckle up for this tiger year. We're already off to another bumpy COVID year, but best to keep hanging in there. The good news is, as I will go into in a little while, that among other things, tigers can serve protective functions. Next slide, please. So, um, as I mentioned, the tiger is one of the 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac, and you can see the other animals up on this um, screen, the, uh, the um, rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, uh, and so on. Um, and so 2022 is a tiger year, and of course it comes up, as I mentioned, every 12 years. Uh, next slide, please. So um, here is a tiger uh, that you can see on, on, the, on the screen. Um, of course, uh, this striped animal. And on the right-hand side, I've put up an image of a Chinese paper cut. Um, it's one paper cut of 12 representing the, the 12 um, Chinese zodiac animals. And I want you to notice on the forehead of this adorable tiger image, um, there is a character um, which looks like three horizontal lines with one line down the middle. I've um, replicated it for you below. And this is actually the character for, for King. And, um, and often um, Chinese, Chinese will represent um, the tiger with this kind of design, which is said to occur on, on tigers or some tigers. Um, because it really corresponds with the idea that the tiger is the king of beasts. So the tigers, um, the king of beasts on the earth and actually corresponding with the tiger on earth is the dragon in the heavens, um, ruling in the heavy heavens. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> so the word for tiger in Chinese, who, actually has the same sound as the word in Chinese for to protect, hu. And so in ancient China, the tiger was considered the guardian spirit of agriculture and could actually devour the drought demon. And tigers also traditionally appear on amulets in China because they were believed to be able to eat evil spirits or at least cause them to flee. And um, in general, just protect people from misfortune. And today, still today, we can see that Chinese parents dress their children in tiger caps, like the one that you're seeing in the image on the left, um, on their birthdays and other kinds of special occasions to bring them good luck. Um, and also the whole point of your kid wearing this tiger cap is that you will fool 
um, the evil spirits into thinking that your child is a ferocious creature. Now, if you feel that you really need one of these for your kid, you can purchase them online. Um, so while the tiger is used to protect the young in China, tigers are also associated with longevity because the ancient Chinese believed that tigers turned white after 500 years and that they could actually live for a thousand years. And upon their death, the spirits entered the earth and became amber. And I've put on the screen for you here um, to the right is a snuff bottle from the Walters Connect collection. It's actually a lovely um, example of a snuff bottle that's been crafted out of amber. Um, snuff bottles are made from all kinds of um, different materials. Um, and in this case, you can see that sort of beautiful um, orangey amber glow to it. So you can sort of see why the, the ancient Chinese would have associated um, this particular um, material with, with a tiger and, and, and its coloring, right? Next, please. So um, now let's turn to consider seven works featuring tigers from the collection of the Walters. I'm gonna be showing you both Chinese and Japanese objects. Today, the Japanese people celebrate the new year according to the Gregorian calendar, just as we do here in the United States. But from the sixth century until 1873, the Japanese new year was based on the Chinese new lunar new year cal or lunar calendar. Um, though native to China and Korea, tigers are not found in nature in Japan. Um, and so artists in Japan tended to rely on works by Chinese artists or look to domestic cats for models. And that's exactly what you're seeing here with this, um, this lovely image of a tiger uh, by the Japanese artist Kano Naganobu. Um, in fact, Naganobu here is um, taking, uh, taking the style of tiger that was created by the Chinese artist Mao Yi, a 12th century Chinese artist who was an Imperial Academy, uh, Imperial Academy painter um, that specialized uh, in flowers, birds, and different animals. Um, as, as his model. And you can see what he's done is he's using this um, really washy ink um, to create this atmospheric uh, sense of, of clouds and mists around this, this tiger, which is lapping water out of this, this stream. Um, this is one of the, a number of, um, typical poses that Chinese artists uh, depicted tigers in. And you can see that um, there's a little bit of a, uh, an earthy, rocky outcrop over to the left of the tiger. So this um, painter though, um, Nagonobu, um, he was, was privileged to have studied both ancient Chinese and Japanese paintings in the collection of um, shogunates and feudal lords. He, he lived um, during the, the late 18th and the early 19th century. And, um, and he um, worked in a number of, of different styles. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. So this is a um, quite a uh, a large um, beaker-shaped vase. Um, it's about 18 in inches tall and it dates to the mid 17th century. And you can see, I'm showing you a, a slide that shows you this vase, um, all the different sides of this vase and then with a, a, a blow up of the tiger itself. And you can see that it's um, painted, it's actually a, a porcelain vase. It's painted in underglazed blue, cobalt blue, um, which can be fired at very high temperatures. And so that was painted on by the artisan. Then it was coated with a clear glaze and then it was fired. 
um, at a high temperature. So you get this beautiful result. And, and you can see that, that the artists who painted these um, blue and whites could get an incredible amount of detail um, using that, that medium. Uh, so he's that or the artist has been 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 able to not only articulate stripes and whiskers and all kinds of details on the tiger, but also um, given a, a nice sense of of these rushes um, around around the tiger and these other creatures that are are on the vase. So a very very um, painterly technique that is um, really in the style of traditional Chinese brushwork. Uh, the other animals on here are the phoenix. Uh, you can see the phoenix above on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side where you see the tiger's tail, you can see the head of a dragon just poking out of the clouds there. Um, it's over, over these waves. And um, then finally, on the very right-hand side, you can see on the upper portion of the vase that there's an image of a chilin, which is a kind of hybrid creature, um, mytho mythological hybrid creature um, that uh, is horned. Um, it can have hor two horns or here as it does here or be like a unicorn. And uh, all of these mythical creatures uh, have an important association in China. And that's that it's said traditionally in China when, when these kinds of um, fabulous creatures appear on the earth, it is a sign that um, there is good governance or there will be good governance. And that's kind of really interesting when we think about it in terms of the period when this particular vase was, was produced. Um, this was produced during the um, Shunzi period period from 1644 to 1661. And this is the time, this is actually just the first um, ruler who um, comes into power after the fall of the Ming dynasty. So it's the beginning of the Qing dynasty of Mongol rule. And um, it would seem that with this vase, there's a desire to make a statement that um, that period of corruption that we associated with the end of that last dynasty is over, and now it's a new reign. Um, things are going to be um, well-governed, auspicious. Things are going to work out really well. Well, what's the tiger doing here? Well, in fact, we know that um, there is a, a long-time story associated with the tiger in China that tells us that um, that in fact um, there was a uh, <clears throat> there was an official who um, went to um, to 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 take um, official status in in a village that had been plagued by attacks by tigers. The people who lived there were terrified. Um, life was in complete disorder. And this new official comes in and he's a very good official, a very orderly official. And he rules so well that the tigers just on their own start to cross the river, leaving the village and um, leaving the village to a return to, to a peaceful, harmonious kind of ex existence. So again, we have this association for tigers with, um, with, with the idea that good governance has, um, uh, has, has arisen. Next, please. <clears throat> I want to move now to, um, uh, to another um, image of a painting, and this is a Japanese painting, but um, while the former Chinese painting that we looked at was actually just a small album leaf, here what we're looking at are uh, Japanese fusuma. Um, they are sliding doors. So um, I'm going to show you another slide after this one. This one shows you these four sliding doors for one section. There was actually, We actually have an L um, 
a con L-shaped configuration of sliding doors, or they would have been in an L-shaped configuration. Um, you can see that I've enlarged the image of the tiger on this one so that you can see there's actually a tiger in, and dragon. And the, um, the artist who painted these is Kishi Gang, uh, Gangku. Uh, Kishi Gangku um, became famous for his paintings of tigers. He was an imperial court official as well. And he also excelled in several styles of painting, um, including Japanese Kano st uh, style painting and in the more naturalistic manner of Chinese painter, the Chinese painter Shen Nanping, and also um, followed uh, 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 in the style of the work of artists of the Murayama Shijo school. Um, but ultimately he founded his, uh, he was the putative founder of what's known as the Kishi school. And he's known for this um, relatively vigorous style that we see here on, on this um, screen. And I'd like you to, to notice that um, here actually, we have an image of not only the tiger, but um, the dragon who is looking down on the, um, the, the tiger again from clouds. And he's again, above the way, about, above the waves. And in some ways this has a lot of similarity with that imagery on the, on the vase we were just looking at on the side with the tiger and the dragon. And um, so um, in the Chinese tradition also in, which is also of course passed on to the, the Japanese tradition, um, the universe results from an inter uh, interaction of yin and yang. And um, the tiger stands for yin. Um, this is this is Taoist theory. Um, and the dragon stands for yang. And these two great forces of yin and yang um, impact the universe. Um, yin elements include darkness, water, wind, and earth. And it's said actually when the law, when the, when a tiger, um, when the wind blows, the tiger roars, you almost, you often um, see that these two being mentioned together. Um, and the yang elements include light, fire, rain, and the heavens. And you can see the tiger, uh, the dragon here is up in the heavens and um, there seem to be sheets of rain coming down uh, around him, um, around those clouds and um, towards, towards the tiger. <clears throat> so uh, next slide, please. Um, so here is an, the image of the um, other part of this L shape set of sliding doors. And um, this is very characteristic, the painting here, especially the birds on the branches really reveal some of his Kano school um, paint, painting style. But um, uh, Ganku was very much known for this kind of tremulous brush that he used. And I think if you look at, at this tiger, the detail of this kind of very kind of a lump of a, a looking tiger there. Um, you can see that for those stripes, he's used this tremulous brush stroke to give a sense of, of force um, to that tiger. And I'd like you to also to notice um, the forehead of that tiger. You'll see that, again, that um, there's that character for Wong or for, for King uh, on the forehead of the tiger. Uh, next slide please. So here I'm just, I'm going to be talking about some imagery on, on tsubas. Um, and these are these um, small components that uh, one finds on Japanese swords. You, I've circled it here on this image of a Japanese sword um, that comes from the collection of the Walters. So you can see um, how those um, fit onto the sword. And next please. And here I'm showing you an example of one tsuba in the co collection of the Walters. And this one's particularly fun for today because it actually um, shows us on this one tsuba six of the um, animals from the Chinese zodiac, including the tiger, which I've 
um, enlarge the largest here. You can see that there are, in this particular suba, there are two holes. There's one hole that uh, that the blade or the, uh, the blade of the sword um, actually fits through. And that other kind of oval shaped uh, sword is a place where a utility knife would have been placed, sort of a utility knife that goes, goes um, with, with the sword. Um, <clears throat> now, um, the, um, the tsuba actually offered the designer and metalsmith uh, a convenient area upon which to express his skill and ingenuity. And sword designers drew, drew their imagery for sword fittings from classical Chinese and, and um, Japanese literature, folk tales, historical events, heraldry, and the nat natural world. Um, and so this kind of fits into that kind of plethora of um, fodder that, um, that these artisans um, used. <clears throat> now, um, the principle of design of the tsuba, so what you're seeing on the left-hand side here, would have been facing um, uh, to the fore to be seen by somebody who was facing the wearer. And the wearer would have seen the back of the suba, which you're seeing on the right-hand side. Um, that The red that you're seeing, the red numbers you're seeing there, of course, aren't original to that. That's just our um, accession number, which identifies the object. Um, to create these designs, the metal worker would make a series of intersecting cuts on the surface of the main metal, usually iron, and uh, that formed the fitting. And um, sometimes this was already carved. And, and these, um, these, these intersecting cuts would form, uh, formed with a chisel or a knife held at an anger, angle, would create these uh, tiny pointed uh, burrs. And then a softer metal like gold, silver, or pure copper wire or foil could then be overlaid and tapped and burnished to be held into the place by these burrs. And this is how the metal workers completed the elaborate designs on these um, tiny works of art. And you can see that in, in this particular case. I mean, this artist is using what's called niguro, uh, nigurume, copper alloy, gold, shibuchi, she, um, uh, which is copper alloy, um, sh uh, shakudo, which is a bullion of gold and copper, and also plain um, copper. Uh, <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. Um, this is another example of a tsuba in the collection of the Walters. And here you can actually see um, a wonderful image of a tiger and bamboo. And again, tiger um, emerging from a bamboo forest was a, a, one of the, the typical ways of depicting a tiger in China and also in Japan. And um, this is a really wonderful um, tiger um, that maybe takes its form more more um, more from the inspiration of a cat than an actual tiger, perhaps. But he's he's a really wonderful um, looking creature. And the next image, please. Um, this is an example of a. Um, Kozuka, which is the sheath for one of those utility knives that I mentioned to you. And this particular one is um, elaborately decorated in the same way that um, those tsuba were decorated um, with, with these metals by, um, by Japanese metal workers. The subject here, I've enlarged um, the, the main character uh, on the tiger um, and put it to the side at the right, is um, is known as Bunkan in Japanese. The Chinese name is Fungan. And he was a, uh, a Tang dynasty, a Chinese Tang dynasty Zen monk or 
Ch Chan monk, um, reputed to live in uh, China's Mount Tiantai, Mount, uh, Mount Tiantai's uh, Guoqing Temple, in a temple in the Tiantai Mountains in China. Um, and he's very much known for his eccentric behavior, including um, this legend uh, that he, he had as his pet a tiger. And you can see that he's riding his pet tiger uh, in, in this um, uh, elaborate design on this sheath. Let's uh, turn to the uh, next image, please. And now finally, I'd like to share with you this, this, um, this wonderful Netsuke um, of a tigress with two cubs. And uh, just to remind you, if you don't know what a Netsuke is, um, it was used traditionally in tandem with these little um, boxes, usually lacquer boxes called um, Inro, which were used to hold medications and other kinds of things. And um, the, the um, Netsuke was a kind of um, toggle that helped um, hold the, um, in, it was attached to a cord and help as was the in-row and helped hold that in-row in place when it was draped over um, the obi or the sash of a Japanese kimono. These, um, these kinds of um, boxes were, were um, originally used by men, but also came to be used by women as well. And this particular um, tigress with a cub, uh, this particular Netsuke is made out of, of ivory um, with um, some shell inlay. And um, it's possible that this tigress with the two cubs is a reference to a popular Chinese story, which is also known in Japan. And it tells of a tigress with three cub cubs. One of the cubs was scraggly looking and so ferocious that the tiger feared it would eat the other two siblings if left alone with them. And one day the tigress smells a, gets the smell of a hunter and flees with the, the, the cubs. And when they come to a river, the tigress um, must figure out how she can cross the river carrying only one cub at a time in her mouth without ever leaving another cub alone with the ferocious cub. So this is, this is um, a kind of riddle, right? Um, so of course, ultimately what she does is she takes the dangerous one first, swims back, then takes, in other words, takes the dangerous one first, drops him off, swims back, takes another cub on her way back, um, from that, leaving that other cub, she takes the ferocious one back again to the other side, picks up the second cub, um, non-ferocious cub, brings him to the other side, drops him off with his brother, um, with his sibling, and then swims back again and picks up the ferocious cub. And then all four of them are reunited again. So, um, as you can see, the, the artist who, who carved this um, uh, craftsman, the Netsuke craftsman people really love to work with ivory, which is a lovely material, um, easy, easy to carve. Um, and they also um, could dye it a bit to give some coloration as they have with this particular case. And there's a great sense of often with um, whimsy and um, sense of movement to uh, to these, these Netsuke, as we see here. So the works that I have just shared with you give you a peek into the many kinds of artworks from Asia that for thousands of years have featured um, tigers. And I hope I've wet, wet your appetite and you will continue to hunt down tigers uh, or hunt down more about tigers and art and especially Asian art over the coming year. So now I um, want to um, open this up to some questions. Next slide, please.
anybody has questions, I'm happy to happy to answer them. Otherwise, um, I think you should all go and enjoy your your dumplings. I'll give you a couple of uh, couple of more minutes. As you can see, I'm wearing my my red in celebration of the Lunar New Year. And I guess that probably most of you realize that Lunar New Year is, is observed in, in China, Japan, and Korea, but um, it's also, of course, um, observed in Taiwan and uh, in Singapore and also in Malaysia and in Indonesia. Um, and I'm getting some really um, lovely comments from from some of our our listeners. Um, thank you, um, Christopher Broom, uh, who um, who enjoyed the presentation, and Jessica, who also thanks um, thanks for the presentation. And um, I just want to thank all of you for um, for showing up. Um, a big thank you to our digital team for producing this program. Um, our biggest thank you, of course, is back to you, the audience, for sharing this experience with us. And we welcome you back for more programs on our social platforms. For upcoming programming, including artist talks, curatorial lectures, performances, and more, please visit our website at the at thewalters.org. Support for the Walters Art Museum is made possible through the combined generosity of individual donors, foundations, corporations, and grants from the City of Baltimore, Maryland State's Arts Council, Citizens of Baltimore County, and Howard County Government and Howard County Arts Council. Happy New Year to everybody. We look forward to seeing you at our next program.